This is Campus News, reporting the top stories from colleges and universities. Next on Campus News, an armed standoff near Concordia College puts a neighborhood on lockdown. Spring football is in full swing. See how teams across the FM area are preparing for next season. MSUM students are working with creatures under the sea. Teaching by day, singing by night, watch as a quartet of guys sings its heart out. Good morning and welcome to Campus News. I'm Shannon Blumgren. And I'm Tanner Robinson. Students at Concordia College endured a tense nine hour long standoff after a man holed himself up inside a home with a gun just three blocks away from campus. That's the sound of a flashbang device officers used to get the attention of 35 year old Blake Fitzgerald. More police say a woman called in around 9 Tuesday morning saying she'd been assaulted by a man she lived with and he had a gun. Clay County deputies helped officers close off the neighborhood as a SWAT team tried to end the standoff peacefully. Concordia students got an email from the college telling them what was going on. Police tried negotiating with Fitzgerald before using tear gas to flush him out. Fitzgerald surrendered to officers without a fight. He's being held on domestic assault charges. An attack on a crowded synagogue during Passover is being condemned as a hate crime across America. And police say it was carried out by a California State College nursing student. 19-year-old John Ernest is accused of opening fire on the Chabad of Poway near San Diego, killing 60-year-old Lori Kay and sending three other people, including an 8-year-old, to the hospital. Investigators say Ernest became a radicalized white supremacist over the last two years, posting an anti-Semitic manifesto online before attacking the synagogue. He could face the death penalty if he's found guilty. A party gone wrong. That's what nearly 200 partygoers at NDSU were thinking when police brought in a pepperball gun to break up the crowd. Police say this all went down last Saturday around 3 p.m. Authorities were sent out to the Bridges Student Apartments those are right next to the Sanford Health Athletic Complex. Police say they were forced to bring in the pepper spray, spray launcher as, after partygoers started throwing things at the building's windows, but never had to use the gun. No one was seriously injured in the incident. Many Minnesotans say there are only two seasons, winter and construction. MSUM will be rebuilding two different parking lots next year, and it'll cause the students to take more money out of their pockets. Students and faculty commuting to campus next year will be noticing an increase in their parking permit fees. All zone permits will be increasing to $330 next year, with general and reserved being raised too. You know, I pay tuition, I pay other fees and stuff. I don't know if I necessarily have to. You know, if I'm a student here, I feel like I should be able to have a parking permit um, because I'm enrolled here, because I go to so many classes on here. I'm a full-time student. Um, I'm also a student athlete. With costs soaring over half a million dollars, the funds need to come from somewhere. So an increase in price is necessary to keep MSUM lots functional. So our parking permit sales, uh, meters, fines, that's the revenue that covers that type of investment in addition to just normal maintenance and repairs. The lots around 7th Avenue and 11th Street will be affected for upcoming semesters in 2019, which holds many spots for students commuting to campus. So now there's going to be less parking spots and I'm paying more for a parking pass I may not even use 90% of the time. As you can imagine, every year the price to do maintenance repairs or the construction increases just with inflation and so on and so forth. So. Um, proposed a, a price increase for the general, the reserved, as well as the all zone permits. MSUM has plans for reconstructing lots until the year 2035 in order to keep the lots safe and drivable for everyone commuting. And as college students are left feeling furious over finding a parking spot, they're also having to dodge and weave the roads to avoid potholes. These cavities of the road have been popping up everywhere on the roads surrounding campuses, leaving cars and students in some tough driving situations. We spoke to M State professor Dennis Miller, who teaches car maintenance. He says road conditions like these could end up costing students. You can get those kind of bids, and sometimes when you're getting those bids, you want to look at the, the whole picture, you know, and sometimes it's not worth the money spent on the vehicle you're working on. 
Miller also says if you know you're going to be on a pothole filled road, take it slow with your car. A terrifying Seattle crane accident has left four people dead and a university grieving. Seattle Pacific University nursing student Sarah Wong was in her car when the crane fell. She, th she and three men in other cars were killed. A spokesman for the Washington Department of Labor Industries says they're investigating four contracting companies in the area to find out why the crane collapsed. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the U.S. government using lotteries to draft hundreds of college-age men into the Vietnam War. Reporter Ben Rieke visited a new exhibit at MSUM's Center for the Arts that helps students picture Nam. Before Larry Nicholson became a dragon, worrying about classes and homework, he served his country overseas, worrying about making it through the night alive. So I was in the Air Force, and I worked in the communications center. While he wasn't on the front line, Larry was in Vietnam for some of the war's biggest turning points. And I arrived in Vietnam in October of 67, left October of 68, so I was there for the first Tet Offensive, 19 years old. His experience was one shared by thousands of soldiers, Marines, pilots, and more an experience on display inside MSUM's Picturing Nam exhibition. It came up in like these big epic crates from the National Archives. You had to crack them open, get all the stuff out of them. Dozens of photos taken by military photographers paint a vivid picture of what life was like for the young men who braved dense jungles and unforgiving swamps in a conflict that changed the nation forever. It was kind of somber for a little bit, um, especially this one in particular. I, I kept staring at him because he's only 17 in that picture. Brings back memories. It really does, you know. But former MSUM professor and Vietnam War reporter Camilla Wilson says these government approved photos only show part of the picture. I think Robert Southey was said once that the first casualty of war is truth. And that to understand what Vietnam was really like, you need to go beyond the pictures and paragraphs. The more history you know, the more knowledgeable you are about what is taking place. Because otherwise, you're just fodder for the next war. With photographer Branson Reeser, Ben Rieke, Campus News. Picturing Nam was made possible thanks to a $17,000 grant from the Minnesota Humanities Center. Over 900 people from two Los Angeles colleges were quarantined due to a measles outbreak. The students and the staff from UCLA and Cal State were either sent home or quarantined in their dorm rooms in an effort to stop the spread of the virus. Two days after the quarantine, 200 people were able to return to school after tests showed they were immune to measles. However, about 300 people are still isolated. MSUM has recently updated its email system for students and faculty, leaving them frustrated over the change. As reporter James McCarty found out, the school has a few reasons for the switch. After a few years of planning and executing, MSUM's new email system is now in place. In 2013 was about the time where we said as campus CIOs, hey, we can, we can do this better. We can be more efficient. Heckman said he's received mixed responses from students. I've gotten a few emails from students either, you know, thanking for the extra mailbox size um, so they can store more stuff. And I've got a few of just, you know, wondering and maybe complaining as to why we did what we did. Not all students are liking the new email setup. I personally don't like them. I think it's really hard to navigate and try to figure it out. The new emails are now more condensed than the old system. So we're, so we're now in the Office 365 platform. There's a ton of products inside of Office 365 that are just available. Um, and the, the benefit is, is we've sort of collapsed all that into the one login. The updated emails also now have 100 gigabytes of storage versus the previous two gigabytes in the past. With photographer Branson Reeser, James McCarty, Campus News. The school says most students are now learning how to use the new system. The moon is making its way to Tennessee. University of Tennessee professor Molly McCanta will help study moon rocks that were collected for decades but were never opened. McCanta says NASA kept the samples closed, waiting for better research technology 
which they now have. The project is called the Apollo Next Generation Sample Analysis Program. It's part of the 50th anniversary celebration of the first moon landing. Macanta begins research next month and will continue for the next three years. MSUM students are able to travel under the sea without even leaving campus. As reporter Alex Larson tells us, it's all happening in the Marine Biology Lab during the campus lab crawl. In the basement of Langseth Hall, students are studying and caring for some pretty unique creatures. MSUM Junior and Marine Lab Club President Savannah Honstein hopes the lab crawl will show students and staff how these sea creatures live right here on campus. The lab crawl is super helpful for us because nobody really knows that it's we have the marine lab here on campus. Um, even faculty who have been here for years still don't know that it's here. With a tide pool in Savannah Stingray Lagoon, the marine lab is home to some social butterflies. Yeah, yeah they're nice. They're soft. The lab also has some not so social animals. Every Tuesday we come down and we target feed them so we take a shrimp and directly give it to them and they take it from us and they eat it. Students are able to learn lots of fun facts throughout the tour. Horseshoe crabs are more closely related to spiders than they are actually crabs. Do they move very fast? They move faster than you'd think but usually when they're in here they just mind their own business. The lab will be getting an eel later this month. With photographer Carrie Hoverson, Alex Larson, Campus News. The Marine Biology Lab was just one of many that opened their doors to students for the crawl. MSUM students took to the campus mall to raise awareness on Earth Day, and for one retired MSUM teacher, it was a chance to talk about his passion. Reporter Madison Nelson Guerra has a story. For 75 year old Dennis Jacobs, Earth Day is a special day for him. We're hoping to kind of promote the cause here. The retired MSUM physics professor even has a van that shows his passion for preserving the environment. I just finished a project, about a five-year project, of putting a biodiesel engine in it. So we can run on uh, cooking oil, or we can run on regular diesel, or we can run on whatever we want. He has strong feelings about what we need to do to clean up the earth. If you look at what the plastics are doing to wildlife, I mean, whales are getting brushed up on shore all the time now because they swallow too much plastic, can't eat anymore. You look at all of it, the major harm we're doing in the oceans and the wildlife and the thing. And we like to say, well, that's Asia, that's, they're doing it over there, that's Africa, they're doing it over there. That's bull, man. In a matter of months, Jacobs and his wife cool. will be traveling cross country, here, spreading the news about how to save the earth. I do see those young people, and I think, you know, maybe there is some hope. With photographer Kylie Meyer, Madison Nelson Gira, Campus News. Retired professors weren't the only people who celebrated Earth Day at MSUM. The campus mall was filled with students who came together to honor the planet. Local organizations came out to educate students on the importance of saving the Earth. Students spent the afternoon drawing with chalk, throwing bags, and tie-dyeing t-shirts. Even though there were a lot of fun activities, student organizers say the event helps meet some serious goals. One takeaway from today, get out, meet people, talk about sustainability, learn about sustainability more important. There's a lot of very interesting things going around. We have the Sierra Club here, we have Clean, we have a lot of people. The Sustainable Student Association will have office hours next year dedicated to inform the campus about their mission. The Kaiser Foundation says that nearly one in five female college students are victims of sexual assault. That's why reporter Anthony Friggen went to NDSU to find a group who's racing against the clock to try to get that number down to zero. Three, two, one, zero. College students and community members spent their rainy weekend running at the Race to Zero to raise awareness about sexual assault. Um, so we've done this race about six or seven times in Bismarck and now this is the second year we're doing it in Fargo. So it's to raise awareness because April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. But even with the blistering winds and wet ground, the race still had a great turnout. Everyone who pre-registered kind of showed up and we, I think we had a few walk-ins today which is great to see. But obviously we would love for better weather. The race even brought in some runners who are a little new to traversing the tundra for six miles. It was. A lot of fun. I uh, haven't done a lot of 10Ks in my life, so it was good to get out here, even though it was kind of a colder day. So I, I guess I signed up for it, and I just felt like I got to do it. I, I some kind of mental motivation just to when I do something, when I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to come out and do it. 
And it's great to see so many people come out on a crappy day like this to support this really important um, mission and, and issue that we see. Um, and we're just really grateful. With photographer Jack Anderson, Anthony Fridgen, Campus News. Organizers of the group say they can't wait for next year's run. It will take place at NDSU's San Sanford Health Athletic Complex. Four former MSUM students studied musical education, and now they are using what they once learned in one of many passions they have, an a cappella quartet. Photographer Anthony Fridgen and I take you on a vocal journey with these bespectacled boys of song. Don't they I know, I couldn't find the beginning though. Okay, remember that. One of our songs, actually, Hands of Pharaoh, was our very first song that we did. And delivered a hand delivered from the hands of Pharaoh. And we're like, hey, we sound pretty good together. Let's come up with a name. Since we all like glasses and the whole moniker of four eyes, and there's four of us, so we're like, that's it. That's the name. I'm not one that gets around, swear my feet stuck to the ground, and though I never did meet you before, I said hello Mary Lou. It's a lot of communication and figuring out what works best for all four of us, because it is, it is for adults who are trying to balance their personal lives as well as their student or working life. So hello Mary Lou. I teach elementary. Chaotic. <laughs> it's fun, but... You know, this, it's, not, it's nothing like this. Your lips, I heard your voice. Believe me, I just had no choice. All horses could make me stay away. I was the last one to get asked, actually. Friends, I think, speak for me. Let them speak for me. They had, um, Eric and Axel kind of had their own, like, they wanted to sing together after college was done. They needed one more person, and somehow they came to me. Like it was meant to be. I've been singing as long as I can remember. I, mean, I sang in the shower in the car, but I didn't actually go out and sing anywhere else. That was just it. So I've been probably singing my whole life for 23 years. <laughs> the Fargo Forest game that we just did was pretty awesome. on us, just four people, four friends. That was a really cool realization of how we, as a group, have been able to get to a place where just four guys hanging out and singing has turned into get out there and be in the community and sing and share our music with everyone. When somebody loves you. All four of them say this quartet is a nice escape from their work lives, and they're happy to perform all around the community. And now we turn it over to Alexis Kennedy for a look at this week's sports. So Alexis, a couple of big NDSU names going to the NFL? Yes, we'll have plenty of football coverage for you guys this week to get you into the fall. Another Bison quarterback is hanging up his college cleats and trading them in for some NFL gear. The Bison's Easton Stick got drafted by the Los Angeles Chargers in the fifth round. During the Nebraska-born gunslinger's time, he won three national titles. He also had over 80 passing and 40 rushing touchdowns during his four-year run with the team. And the future Charger quarterback will be joining up with one of his former teammates. The Chargers also picked up Bison's starting center, Tanner Volson. The North Dakota native who played with Stick over the four years took home a collection of awards. Some of them included the FCS 88 Offensive Lineman of the Year, MVFC Offensive Lineman of the Week twice, and AP All-American First Team. The two will be reunited in Los Angeles once the training camp kicks off this summer. With the Bison losing such key components to their lineup, they now are moving on to the next chapter. Reporter Nick Knapper brings us inside their annual spring game to see where the Bison go from here. In the Fargo Dome, Bison football players celebrated their seventh national championship in the last eight years. Players received their rings as part of the celebration of a stellar past season. It's been really fun. It was good to see some of the seniors that had come back because I didn't really know who they were. And Riding on the bus, I got to meet them and see, you know, what, what Bison Pride is all about. And I can't be more thankful for the trip to the White House. It was phenomenal. And the group of guys in the locker room, it's just been really fun. Uh, like you said, it's been a whirlwind to a school and football, but I really enjoyed it and loved it. What's past is past. 
And with spring practice, NDSU moves on to another season. Not only new players, but also a new head coach who hopes to continue this impressive run. The week prior to Easter, all the way up until the spring game, there's been steady improvement. And I think that's some of our young kids starting to mature a little bit as football players, starting to understand what it is to be a bison. And uh, that'll, that'll go a long ways in the summer as we move forward. It's been an impressive few years, with two quarterbacks recently getting drafted into the NFL. Now a chance for new names and new faces to make their mark on NDSU football history. Competing every day, and we're best friends off the field, so it's all good. You know, whoever is, is that guy, come uh, August 31st at Target Field, you know, we're all going to be supporting, we're all going to be doing the same stuff game plan wise. With photographer Jacob Tenson, I'm Nick Knapper, Campus News Sports. NDSU starts its season August 31st at Target Field in Minneapolis against Butler. A North Dakota State University wrestler is getting his time in the national spotlight. 197-pounder Cordell Eaton is on the 2019 National Wrestling Coaches Association Division I Scholar All-American list. Easton maintains a 3.79 GPA while going 17 for 10 for the 18-19 season. He has made the academic All-Big 12 wrestling first team three times. Eaton is one of the 142 wrestlers to make the Division I Scholar All-American list in the country. Heading east across the Red River, MSU and football found their own success last season. Now they're looking to sustain that success over multiple seasons. Reporter Griffin Nelson takes us to the field. It brings up fourth down. The whipping April wind held the sting of fall, and it almost felt like football season had arrived early. Stuck between their most successful year in two decades and a season with heightened expectations, MSUM football is looking to move from conference lightweight to a dark horse contender. The Dragons hosted their annual spring game, pitting the offensive and defensive units against each other, dueling it out in front of a crowd and giving players a taste of live action. When we had our full first unit group, I thought we were pretty um, crisp and sharp off of that and so I think um, you know there are a lot of things that we can build on in particular how our defense played and our offensive line. Heading into his ninth season coach Laque propelled MSUM to an 8-4 and four overall record in 2018 and earned the program its first postseason appearance since 1994. Laque is preaching the same day-by-day -day mentality that guided them to their recent success. For us, the biggest thing that we've talked about is just understand that last year was a great season. There's a lot of great things that we can learn from and carry with us, but that season's done and we need to start this as a, a fresh team. In a hotly contested affair, featuring a devised scoring system, the defense prevailed on a goal line stand. Guys put a lot of stock into winning because they, they've played against each other all spring. They, they're buddies. They want to have a little bit of a chance to gloat. As spring turns to summer, optimism surrounds a program on the rise. The only thing left to do is wait until kickoff. With photographer Damien O'Donnell, Griffin Nelson, Campus News Sports. The Dragons open up their season on the road in Crookston September 5th. Guys, I don't know about you, but I'm not quite ready to fast forward to fall. I'd like to enjoy some of the spring baseball. I am right there with you. I cannot wait for summer. Well, soon football will be around the corner. Thanks, Alexis. All season long, we have been celebrating 35 years on Prairie Public Television by looking back at some of our favorite stories. This week, we go back to 2012 when reporter Laurel Lee Lofsgard introduced us to three MSU Moorhead retirees who share a special bond. Together, they made a path back to their childho childhoods one track at a time. This retired group of MSU Moorhead men can't seem to stay away from their old workplace, meeting almost every morning for coffee and catching up on their day-to-day -day lives. But three of them get together to share something else they have in common. Toy trains. And this isn't just a recently developed hobby. My parents bought me a Lionel train set when I was a kid in the 1950s. I got into the Lionel trains, toy trains, when I was 10 years old, back in 1951. They even helped each other bring their common train love back to life. Well, he suggested just bring it over one day. He looked at it briefly, you know, to just a, a smallest amount of, 
uh, maintenance on it and put it on the track and off it ran. And it was like, wow, <laughs> to see my old train come spring to life again, 50 years later almost. It was pretty exciting. And it's not just the trains that make this setup fun and interesting. So that coal loader is, gosh, 60 years old. It's almost as old as I am. <laughs> He'll sweep off the chicken car. <laughs> With all this excitement, it's easy for them to decide how to spend their spare time. Well, I have to choose. Should I spend my money on trains or go to the bar and gamble? And I've chosen to go, go with the trains. <laughs> oh, off to West Fargo to the stockyard. So as soon as my son uh, went off to law school, I got his bedroom. And so it's full of trains now. I like to make it bigger, but my wife won't let me put a hole in the wall and go into my daughter's old bedroom. And even if they can't go on a real train, having their model ones, for them, it's a very close second. At night, with the lights flashing and the sounds of the Lionel trains, it's, it's pretty, and it really conjures up some great memories. So yes, sir, you can just close your eyes and it takes you right back to the 50s. So. It gets so much fun, you know, to be on the train. It's, and if you can't be on it, you can, in a sense, live that journey by putting on the train music, putting on the hat, lighting the lantern, turning the lights out, crank these guys up, and uh, you're on that train, at least in your, in your mind, you're on that train. Thank you for joining us for this trip back through 35 years of Campus News. And that's it for this season of Campus News. We leave you with another look at Four Eyes, Four Guys. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next year. For the beauty of your life will shine when the day is done. Let the love I've shared speak for, speak me. for me. Let the love I've shared speak for speak me. And all this life of joy and care, speak for me. Campus News is produced by the Television News Workshop in the School of Communication and Journalism at Minnesota State University Moorhead in cooperation with Prairie Public Television.